Scott, as center manager of the Region Arcade, the pandemic over the last three months must have been the most challenging any center manager has faced uh, you know, in its history. You've reopened as of the 23rd. And what kind of shape is the arcade after the shutdown? Uh, it would be wrong of me to say we're in good shape, we're in better shape, because things are, are still very much up in the air. There's a lot of uncertainty, not just from, from retailers, but also from shoppers as well, as to where they, they'll spend their money in the future. We had, a, uh, we had some projects that were ongoing just before lockdown, such as the new food hall and the redevelopment of Regent Street and also the first floor. So fortunately, we're still progressing with those, um, with those projects. Uh, so we believe that we're still heading in the right direction and that you know, the future will, will be promising as of when um, consumer sentiment is, 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 is better than it is now and, and customers feel comforted when they come into a shopping center or into a store, so therefore uh, spend uh, uh, accordingly. Um, so yeah, it, it's very difficult to, to assess the current situation. What we're, we're seeing on a, on a daily basis, let alone weekly basis um, nationally, is that stores that promised to reopen and possibly did reopen are saying, actually, we, we need to close. So we're all still trying to assess where we are and where we're going to be. And it's just so, so difficult to determine. But we're, we're very fortunate that over 60% of our retailers have opened already. Um, we have um, another amount which therefore takes us to 80% open by the end of next week. And we've had very, very few casualties, which we're, we're very grateful for. And for those that have opened, how would you describe the trading conditions? And what are the expectations are you setting for, for shoppers? The, the first few days, so from the 15th, everybody was extremely positive. Shoppers were glad to see stores reopen. The retailers themselves were glad to be trading and, and, and back working again. Um, but we knew very early on that as the week progressed, people would become more cautious because every store has a different environment and they're asking people to behave in a, in a slightly different way to the next. So as a shopper, you've constantly got your wits about you and you're trying to determine how to behave when you go in, in, into any one store. So we knew that as the weeks progressed, people would therefore, as they become cautious, would start to stay away again. So if we look at customer numbers, we were 35% down on the first week um, based on the same period last year, which is a great place to be because nationally we were 50 to 60% down as an industry. So we, we held a pretty pretty well so there was that 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 initial um i suppose the, the 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 one for people to go out and to see products and to, to buy it and to take it away rather than shop online uh the following week was slightly quieter and we're predicting that the next two weeks will be quieter again the challenge that we're we're going to see as an industry is that as the bars restaurants and coffee shops reopen towards the end of this week and open on the fourth that there will again be this influx of, of, of people wanting to go out and have that experience and then over cautiousness again because they believe that either the environment is just not comfortable enough or that people they've they've or, or that the people that they've seen and things that they've witnessed is that other people are, are floating the rules and therefore that makes them a bit more cautious. So I think we're, we've probably got a good six to eight weeks until we start to um, to see things just just starting to even out really and customers become a bit more relaxed and a bit more familiar with social distancing and comfortable with it. And how prepared are you uh, and how much resilience is there with the Region Arcade if there's another outbreak? Yes, I mean, there, there is a fear that there'll be a second wave or, you know, there's, there's now a lot of talk to suggest that the, the virus was here much earlier than, 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 than lockdown and, and much earlier than the start of this year. So therefore, it could be a, a, a third phase that we see. I think that people are, are starting to act, and I mean, I'm sorry to, to keep on saying the word cautious, but um, uh, from what we can see, people are behaving very responsibly. So as a town, we're seeing that our catchment are taking the virus very seriously um, and are behaving appropriately. So any second wave as such, I think will be handled very, very well. And people will still, if they need to come out, um, will do so for the items they, they believe are essential 
um, and only therefore make that trip because they feel they have to. So we're, we're not necessarily um, as worried about the second wave and, and the impact that could have. The, the worry would be really that we have this influx of people and people not knowing really how to, how to follow the rules and therefore a second wave coming because of that, from that. What more are you looking for from the Cheltenham Borough Council and central government? Yes, um, we, we, we all need support, um, you know, not just the individual retailers, but whether we be a shopping centre or stand on high street, town centres and city centres, unfortunately, have been dying for, you know, for a number of years. And we saw things really escalate last year and pick up pace and therefore lockdown and the situation we currently find ourselves in is that if we don't evolve very very quickly actually the rate of decline is is is, is going to remain um at, at the pace it was just before lockdown which i say is probably the fastest we've seen for years we 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 as a town um and therefore from from the council um perspective is we always over message things in Cheltenham and always want to put on a very brave face and be very positive because we believe that's the right thing to do. And it probably has been in years gone by. But unfortunately, it does mean whenever there are grants and um, we could be eligible for, for some kind of government support, we're always seen as trading much better than other towns or cities. So therefore, we get overlooked. So we must make sure that um, from, from the council side and also from, from business side, that we're actually very honest about how difficult trade is so that we have the ability to, to tap into any funds um, should they become available. But also we need to start looking at the, the movements of the pedestrians around town. And we have far too many junctions that people have to negotiate when they come up for a single shopping trip. So we have to make that much easier. Uh, and what I mean by that is the public realm. We've been calling for, for improvements for years and Cheltenham really has slipped to a very, very poor, poor state. And we now have to pick a pace with that and we have to you know, press on very quickly. We have to do the repaving works at the top end of the high street and the strand. And we have to do that regardless of the financial situation. And we also have to start looking at what action um, we need to take for the promenade because the promenade has suffered for the last 18 months and is deteriorating very, very rapidly and is almost getting to the point that it's going to be irretrievable. So we need to step in very quickly as a, as a town to, to, to make sure that the jewel in our crown um, remains, remains as being so. From a national level, um, we'd love to see the government put some pressure on local authorities, such as Cheltenham, for, for car parking, because car parking is extortionate. And unfortunately, local authorities rely on that income because obviously their, their revenue streams are, 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 are outside of, of government funding. Um, are, are very narrow, so therefore they need to, to, to do that. So we understand why the local authority has to charge what they do, but we have become very unaffordable as a town, much more, um, much less affordable than towns around us. So therefore we need to work much harder. So yes, we need the, the government to actually set some guidelines for local authorities um, so that we are, you know, we're protected and that customers, when they decide to come back, can do so at ease. Well, given all those challenges you just mentioned regarding the the pavements and the and the parking, what's your messages? What's your message uh, to retail shoppers uh, going forward over the next three to six months? It's very very difficult to to give a a, a direct message because different retailers uh, have, are adapting the rules in very different ways. So our message to shoppers really. Um, just from, from, from the measures we've taken in the shopping centre, is that we want them to feel safe. We want them to feel that this is an environment that is safe and clean and an environment that if they choose to come and shop here, that we're not putting them under any, uh, any risk and there's not any risk of them um, coming into contact with, with, with anything um, they, they don't want to, such as you know, the virus, the second wave. Um, but the message really is that you know, we need support. We need them to, to, to come back to the high street that we've all experienced um, a, a life of online shopping. So the, you know, the three months of lockdown actually showed us what, 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 what it was going to be like to buy essential items if we continue to shun the high street in that these stores just aren't going to be there. And as convenient as it may be to shop online, actually for every single item you need, 
and for convenience, is it really that uh, that convenient? Then it, the 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 reality is that that it isn't, and it's actually quite inflexible. Um, so we need people to remember what life was like when we could only shop online. Um, so that's the messaging that we would say to people to, to for them to help support their their local stores. But uh, when they, they do come into town, it's just making sure that they feel safe and that we're taking their safety very seriously. Uh, I believe we've, we've done that um, from our messaging. It's, it's a very, uh, there's a very fine line of being, of, of having too much caution and people feeling very uncomfortable and very on an edge and actually not having enough so that people don't know exactly what your expectations are and how you want them to behave as they enter your shop or shopping centre. So hopefully we've got the balance right in that people do feel safe and they do understand what our, uh, the measures that we've put in place are and what we're doing to, to safeguard. But, you know, obviously the next few weeks will be, will be the key test. Scott LaHive, Centre Manager of the Region Arcade. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.